Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a horror drama film called, The Battery. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins in an abandoned home. Mickey is wearing headphones and is listening to a song from his CD player. The song is playing loud enough that he can no longer hear anything going on around him. He stands outside the abandoned home, smoking and waiting. Suddenly, the song stops playing. Mickey hits the headphones, but nothing happens. He motions to the house and sits on the porch next to a backpack, and places his own backpack opposite of it. Mickey puts his cigarette in his mouth as he takes out the batteries from the CD player and throws it far away. He places a new set of batteries and continues to listen to the music. He stands up and tries to take a peek in the front door. Suddenly Ben signals for them to go. Mickey grabs his backpack and runs away. Ben uses his revolver and fires two shots inside the home grabs his backpack and follows after Mickey. Mickey and Ben are two former baseball players. Tough Ben was a starting catcher before a zombie apocalypse has overtaken the entire New England area. He is a rugged man with a beard covering the entire half of his face. A little bit on the plus size, his body physique does not stop him from killing any walking dead they see along the way. He has long adapted to their new lifestyle, which includes scavenging for supplies and constantly being on the move. Mickey, on the other hand, was out in the bullpen most of the time before the beginning of the end of the world. The two of them never hung out in the same circles when they used to play, so they hardly ever really know each other. He is a gentle who refuses to learn basic survival skills and constantly isolates himself by listening to his CD player with headphones, burning through batteries. The two former baseball players travel the back roads of Connecticut with no destination in mind. One day, they stop by the forest to rest for a bit. Mickey sits comfortably on his foldable chair as he begins to play with some scratch tickets. Meanwhile, Ben makes himself comfortable as he takes his shoes off in socks and stretches his toes, wiping the soles of his feet on the dry grass. He then proceeds to take a handful of pistachio nuts and shoves them in his mouth. Soon after, Ben asks Mickey to start working on their curveball. Hours pass, the two men walk through the woods. Ben carries a baseball bat, while Mickey listens to his music. They stop near a lake with canoes docked by the lakeside. They find a cabin that has long been abandoned. So, Ben makes himself comfortable by going fishing. Mickey sits on his foldable chair as Ben tries to convince him to go fishing, telling him that it is useful for survival. Mickey takes out cans and cans of tuna that they have packed and brought along with them. This gesture convinces Ben to stop fishing. So, he decides to let the fishing pole stay hanging on a branch, and walks to his backpack to have some snacks. Mickey stands up from his seat and decides to roam around the house. At the back of the house, not long after, Ben takes a notebook and flips it to the page with two columns drawn on it. A, B, and M initials are on each column simultaneously. The B column has 63 sticks drawn on it, while the M column does not have any at all. This is Ben's zombie kill list. He is monitoring the number of zombies they have killed along the way. Ben writes two sticks to add to his count. Soon after their hike to the woods, they come across a Volvo. Ben proceeds to the driver's side and opens the door. A zombified woman crawls out and Ben shoots her on the head. Then Ben enters the car and finds that it smells like someone just died in there, literally. Mickey makes his way to the passenger seat. They begin to drive off to nowhere. They park in one area when it suddenly starts raining. Ben tries to turn on the radio, but all they can hear is static. Mickey notices a sunroof and begins to manually rotate the regulator to open it. As it is raining, Ben calls it a rainroof and tells Mickey to shut it back. Mickey remembers that he used to be with a girl in Pittsfield. So, the two make their way to her now abandoned home. While Ben goes around the house to check for any zombies, Mickey sits on the bed of his former girlfriend as he stares out the window. He stands up and makes his way to the former girlfriend's drawers. He opens the first drawer on the right and sees a CD. Mickey takes out the CD from his CD player and puts the one he finds inside her drawer. Mickey proceeds to open the underwear drawer and finds her clean underwear neatly placed inside. He grabs two of them and takes a big sniff. Afterwards, he finds a glass bottle of perfume on the table and sprays it on the air. He takes a deep breath, reminding him of his lover's scent. He then wraps the bottle of perfume with the former girlfriend's underwear and he places them inside his pocket for safekeeping. Mickey also keeps one of the pictures hanging on the mirror of his former lover's drawer. 
Meanwhile, Ben searches for important items in the garage. He finds an empty gasoline container, another foldable chair, and some walkie-talkies, which they will be bringing with them. As he tidies up the items in their stolen Volvo, Mickey arrives with two toothbrushes and a big jug of water. He places some toothpaste on the brush and hands it to Ben. The two men begin brushing their teeth. While they brush, Ben shows Mickey the discovery he just made. He puts the back seat down and opens the back door of the car to show him that the space is wide enough to sleep on. So, they begin getting some blankets and a bunch of pillows and a stuffed teddy bear and they place them in the back of the car. Soon after, Ben and Mickey chill on the back porch of the house. Ben knows Mickey well enough and tells him that the answer is no, they will not be staying there. He tells him that they have to be like sharks. They need to keep moving in order to survive, because if they st settle, they die. Ben begins to inform him about the time they were stuck in Mickey's house in Pittsfield for three months. They were with Mickey's mother and brother. Ben reminds him of the difficult situation of surviving for their sake, that he had to kill their dog so they could eat. This is because they literally had nothing else to eat. Soon after, as they test the walkie-talkies, they suddenly hear a conversation between two survivors, Frank and Annie. Implying they belong to an organized group of survivors called The Orchard. They listen as Frank tells Annie to go out looking for a movie called Tremors on account of one of their people celebrating their birthday. Mickey eagerly contacts them and asks to join. He tells them his location and who he is with, begging them to stay with their group of survivors. Frank flatly refuses and tells Mickey to get off the channel. Frank also tells Annie to not contact them because it's against their rules, leaving Mickey devastated. Despite Ben's advice, Mickey tries contacting them again several times, but no responses. One day, Mickey is fast asleep in the car while Ben is out taking a bath in the river. A zombie woman trudges towards the Volvo. Fortunately, the windows are partially open for air to come in so the zombie woman isn't able to reach into the car. He wakes up from his nap and finds a note from Ben saying he has gone fishing and that he should not die. Mickey, watching this walking dead trying to get in the car, takes a good look at her and finds her body quite attractive. So, he takes this opportunity to start jerking off on the side of the zombie woman. As he is about to reach his climax, the zombie is shot on the head by Ben. Blood splatters all over the window. Ben sees Mickey masturbating and laughs at him, telling him to finish it off first. Soon after, the duo travels further and explore another house inside a forest. Ben goes in first to check around the house for safety purposes. Afterwards, Mickey goes inside one bedroom and realizes that he misses sleeping on a bed. So, he goes to Ben and proposes sleeping inside like a normal person. Ben relents at first, but decides to ease his friend's frustration and agrees afterward. In return, he keeps Mickey's CD player for the night. That evening, Ben drinks, listens to music and dances on the first floor, while Mickey comfortably settles on the bedroom located on the second floor. Mickey then speaks on the walkie-talkie, trying one more time to contact the people in the orchard. Annie finally replies and this time firmly tells him to stay off the channel and to stop contacting her group. The following morning, Ben quietly places a bat next to the sleeping Mickey. He then goes outside of the house and unties the zombie that he captured the night before. He brings the zombie into the house and releases it in Mickey's room. Ben keeps the door shut while urging Mickey to kill it with the baseball bat. After the sound of the struggle stops, Ben opens the door and discovers his friend successfully scoring his first zombie kill. Mickey angrily attacks Ben and storms outside. As Ben tries to cheer him up, Mickey breaks down in tears, telling Ben of his conversation with Annie. Killing his first zombie and getting turned down by a community seems to change Mickey and his way of thinking. He starts taking Ben's advice, he learns to fish and spends much less time with his headphones on. One day, they stop by the road to find an abandoned car. As Mickey leans on the hood of the car, he comes to find that it's hot, noting that someone is out there somewhere. Ben tells him to keep watch as he tries to get the rest of the gasoline from the abandoned car. Seeing that there isn't any gas left, Ben gives up and his motions to Mickey. He sees him being held hostage by a man with a knife. The stranger orders Ben to give him their car keys. Ben tricks the man into letting Mickey go. The man runs to the meadow and Ben shoots and kills him. Immediately after, two other survivors arrive in another vehicle. The woman explains that the man stole the car from them, and says Ben did the right thing by killing the stranger. 
her companion Egghead, refuels the abandoned car and they prepare to leave. Mickey somehow recognizing Annie's voice from the walkie-talkie, calls her by name. Annie, not wanting them to follow her to her group, shoots Ben in the left leg. She threatens to shoot him again if Mickey doesn't give the car keys. Mickey tells Ben to give the keys to Annie, who then throws it into a large grassy area, then drives away with Egghead. Night starts to fall. As it is too dark to find the keys, Ben and Mickey decide to sleep in the car. Soon after, Mickey wakes up from a strange noise. Ben decides to turn the headlights on and they come to find that a horde of zombies is approaching them. Their cars soon become surrounded by zombies. Mickey is annoyed at the sight and sound of the zombies surrounding them, so they decide to cover all the windows with whatever they find useful. Because Ben cannot move fast due to his gunshot wound, the two are forced to spend an undetermined number of days inside the car. Drinking, smoking, playing games, and eating whatever food they have left. One day, they finally decide that Mickey should get out through the sunroof and try to find the car keys. Ben waits for an excruciating five minutes. When he returns, Ben sees that Mickey was bitten on the hand. Mickey does not know what to do but pleads with Ben to let him live. As for Ben, he is forced to shoot and kill Mickey, letting out a scream of anguish. The movie ends with Ben talking to the walkie-talkie, claiming he will go find and kill Annie to avenge the death of his dear friend Mickey. After Ben escapes the car, he walks down the road using a bat as his makeshift crutch, with a horde of zombies shambling behind him. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.